Well, hi there, Power Rappers. My name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to walk through the creation of a new application from start to finish. So we're going to build an application in Power Apps by take, downloading an Excel spreadsheet, building an app together so you can actually use this application with me today, and then we'll build an application from that using a wizard. So let's see how fast we can build an application with Power Apps. Stay tuned. So in this video, we're going to start from the ground up. We're going to download the same spreadsheet together. From that spreadsheet, we're going to upload that into something called Dataverse and then build an application after that. Dataverse is a database system that, that is built into the Power Platform. The, the uh, Dataverse is essentially a SQL Server database behind the scenes for my IT professionals in the audience. For my business folks in the audience, this allows you to build out database tables without having to have a database developer skills. So you can do it through a web page, you can change typing, all sorts of really cool stuff we can do very easily. Doing this will require that you have Dataverse somewhere in your environment that you have permissions to do this with. Uh, the best way to do that is to look up the, the developer edition of Power Apps, and that gives you a free version, a free environment that you can play with Dataverse in. I have another video of that, I'll link to that in the, in the uh, bottom description as well on how you can create your own developer environment. So let's begin. So again, we're gonna do this from the ground up. So I'm gonna start by downloading a data set from data.gov. So go to data.gov, and then we're gonna search for the national, all right, there we go, oh, national stock number. Once you do that, once you hit search, it's just a random file I found that has a, it's an Excel spreadsheet that we can use together that we can all be on the same page. So once you do that, click on that Excel link that you see right here. And that Excel link is going to download a file. So again, I'm looking for national stock number extract, and I'm clicking on that XLS file that you see right there. Doing so is going to download the file that we're going to use throughout this little quick video. All right, next, we'll go to make.powerapps.com. Now, first thing we'll do when we go to make.powerapps.com is you'll notice the environment up in the top right. The environment is essentially a server at Microsoft that holds all of your goodies for you. Now, you can have all your apps, your power automations, your users, your data, all of that gets wrapped into an environment. Think of it like a server, like prod, development, and QA. Now, if you were able to download an environment or download the, the developer edition, or, which is free, just to sign up for the developer edition, it will create a environment that has your name in it, where you can, you can do Dataverse and play with this all you want. If not, just a mental note that you'll likely not be able to do Dataverse in your the company name default environment. So you might want to go and look at that description of this video and get that developer environment if your company allows that. Okay, there's a chance your company may, may prohibit that. So we'll start by going to make.powerapps.com, choose an environment that makes sense for you. I'll use this Brian July events environment. Now there's a few ways you can create new applications. You can create one by, by typing what you want right there. This is gonna use ChatGPT, our Microsoft's flavor it called Copilot to build the application. We can start with data, which is what we're going to do. We can build web pages. And there's also templates you can do. Lastly, you can create applications by starting from scratch, just building an application the old fashioned way. Uh, you can do that but essentially by going over to apps and then you'll see new app right here. Now, typically we'll start with a solution, uh, but that's outside the scope of this video. So we're gonna, in this video, we're gonna start with data, the data that you just downloaded from data.gov. So we'll select this option that you see right above me on the right on the left here. And we'll say, notice we can actually start with a blank table. Uh, we can start with an existing table, point to a SharePoint list or whatever. In our case though, we're gonna upload a spreadsheet here. Uh, if you did have SharePoint data, you can go to connect to external data. If you had, that works for a few different data sources. In our case though, we're gonna go ahead and point to that spreadsheet that we just downloaded. I'm gonna select that from a device. 
I will then browse out. Let me go ahead and just move that aside for a few moments here. But all I'm doing is I'm, I'm pointing to my downloads folder and then pointing to that extract file that you just saw me download a moment ago. This takes a few seconds, but what it's doing right now is it's reading the schema and it's guessing on data types. Is this a number? Is it a string? Or is it a date? Likely, uh, that file is very, very vanilla. It's just, it's no, there's no Excel tables in that file of any sort. You're going to want to ideally spend a few minutes formatting those data types in that spreadsheet to make it be more appropriate. If you do that, uh, Power Apps here will read that appropriately, and you'll notice here things like pricing right here has a proper data type on it because it read the data type in the Excel spreadsheet. The other ones here are all ABCs, which means they're textual columns. It also recognized that, hey, we said this was a, a currency field to hold pricing, but our first row out of the gate here is going to give us an error where it has a, the word price here. If I flip this to true, it will read that, the error goes away, and now we can see that it has the proper data types here. Now we could also look at this and say, well, I don't know what common name is here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get rid of the underscore and go common name here or rename it to whatever I want. I can also change the data type here. I can make it where it's not a text field, where it's a phone number. I can make it required. All of those kind of goodies can be done very, very easily. Matter of fact, I'll make that one required there, just, just for giggles here. All right, we can go through. We can also see the table properties of where I'm writing this to. When I hit Edit Table Properties, we can see that uh, this is where it might it's going to be called. I'll call this a National uh, Product List, something like that. Uh, uh, what is your primary column? What, a primary column is how you are going to communicate with me. Uh, am I going to read a number off to you, or am I going to read a product number to you? It does not have to be guaranteed to be unique, but what it is a number of is how you and I are going to communicate. There is additionally another key that will guarantee the column be unique, but this is more about human communication. So my humans, in my case, understand this NSN number, and that's how we're going to talk about you know, these numbers here. So I'm going to read off an NSN, and that's how you'll recognize that. All right, with this done, now notice it's, it's not you'll maybe notice here that it's not, it still has ABC, even though it is a number. The reason why is those dashes that you see there. So things like leading zeros and dashes are going to force it to be a string in this case. If you see that the data types don't make sense, make sure that you go back to the Excel spreadsheet and format that spreadsheet accordingly. It does not have to be an Excel table, but it makes it a little bit easier for you to manage. Once we do that, let's get rid of my face here so you can see the full thing here. You'll notice that we can go down the bottom right and create our application. We can also do things uh, a number of other ways. We can go in and, and create other kind of columns as well and add new columns. But this is a great way of starting here. Once we do this, this application will start to build itself. It is going to build a wizard application. Uh, the wizard application only at this time supports one table. However, we can add additional tables after the ad original application is built. So once this wizard finishes right here, I can go through and add SharePoint and more SQL Server tables, more Excel spreadsheets. It doesn't matter. And we can kind of link them together through a data mesh of some sort. Now, the tables are now been uploaded. That's what you saw that delay was it uploading the data to Dataverse. And now that the data is uploaded, we can find that on the left side where you see that database icon. In a moment, we're going to see that product list on the left side here. Now, just to give you a quick heads up about what this interface looks like. There's our application. There's my table right there. And I can select this and hit Edit Data to make modifications to my table. The, the Excel spreadsheet is no longer required. My data is now living in Dataverse. And if I had a little bug right now, it looks like, but if I had, uh, we would see those rows right here. It could still be loading those here. We can also change the name of these columns here. We can make uh, any kind of changes we wish at that point as well. Now, we have our basics here. So you'll notice it's refreshing right now. Give it a few seconds, and that should light me up here. Uh, as it goes through this, uh, we can go through and add additional data. We can go through and change the theme if we want, make it more of a steel look, look at looking theme or a lighter color, whatever you want. In one click, you can do that. You can, of course, select this and rename it. It is responsive. So as I go through and play this, 
I can try different interfaces here as well. well. We'll actually wait a few seconds more longer, and I should be able to refresh this now and hopefully get some data in here now. Uh, what was happening there is still in the background, trying to give us the, a, an environment we can start playing with as fast as possible. And as you can see, it's still kind of thinking right now. So let's go ahead and edit this data and see what's going on in here. So when this happens, our best bet, bet is to first of all start editing the data, editing the tables, get your table structure. There we go. We can see there is data now here. And now you can make your, your column changes by editing columns, moving them left or right, filtering the data however you wish. All of that can be done very easy. Now, if I go through and I uh, oh, get rid of me so we can see the whole thing there. If I get rid, rid of this and close this down, now you'll see data in the application. So just a mental note, it might take a few seconds for it to show up. Be patient. If it shows up in a few seconds, keep on editing that table. And once you see data there, you'll see data behind me over here as well. So I showed you the theming. Let's kind of walk through a little bit about what we can do in this application. If this is your first experience in Power Apps, you'll notice in the top right, you can hit the play button and play the application. Notice it supports tablets. It doesn't matter if this is a Macintosh, a PC, a, a, um, a, an iPad, or an iPhone, or an Android. It doesn't matter. We can also go through and simulate different environments here. Like we can, we can simulate if I had an iPhone 14, for example, what would that look like? If I had a, um, a, a iPad, what would that look like? We can also simulate even a flipping of the device. So what happens if I'm horizontal now? Would it look, how would it look on an iPhone when I did that? So it gives you all those abilities to kind of see how, see how responsive the application is going to be very, very easily. We can also simulate the, the flip back here and you can see that all my products look clean. If I select it, then it goes to the details. So it's very, very responsive from the first moment on. Additionally, if you're new to Power Apps, you can also hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Command key on a Mac. And as you go through this, you can actually select your products this way as well. Now, once you pick a product, the wizard gives you a little pencil icon where you can make changes. You'll notice though, that if I, I, I might want this description to be a little bit longer. You'll notice that I got a lot of stuff inside of here. So I can change this if I wanted to from a single line to multi-line on the right side and then just kind of drag it down a little bit and it creates a, a more uh, robust area where I can type in descriptions. And again, it looks just like it did before, but now I got multi-lines on all the interfaces uh, very, very easily, okay? Additionally, it handles all the deletions for me, all the, the editing for me, all of that stuff is done right inside Dataverse. So as I delete this record, this application it built was spot on. And then lastly, if you want to kind of take a look at this, I can go over and search for certain products. So for example, if I scroll down, I see this one called packaging. So if I search for pack, it will find all the packaging products here. Now, how did it do that? Well, one way it did that is essentially, this is called a gallery of data. And if I select that, you'll see the command right above. So first of all, we select the second row in your gallery, look up, and you'll see a search command. It's searching this table, comma, where is it getting its search criteria from? That text box right here, it's called search input one. Notice if I select a text box, search input one. That's where it got that, got that from. So it's passing in whatever text I typed in search input one, and it's gonna search my national number, my description, my common name, and whatever that AAC column is, all in one foul swoop. So it's searching all four columns with that one search box. So that's how that works. If you wanna alter that, you can most certainly alter that. We can also go and choose the first record and make changes to the first record very easily also. So a rule of galleries is when you pick the second record or third record or whatever, it will pick the whole gallery. The first record though is your, your, um, your template. So when you pick the first record and you select the arrow, for example, and move it around, notice every row underneath it will also change. Now you can change the icon to be more appropriate if you want, or you can say, I want to change that to the view icon and, and make it more you know, modern feeling if you wanted to, it's up to you. We can also go through though, as we select each of the first records here, you'll see which column is being associated with that. So up top here, when I select that first record, we'll see we're looking at the text property of that record, and I'm seeing this item.msn. If I backspace that, 
and do this item dot, we can change that to maybe the common name instead. So this item is referring to the row, and then after the dot is the column inside that row. So by doing that, now we're seeing the, the that now being in front. On the right side, you can change your fonts. You can also change them up top as well if you wanted to. Uh, you can change your background colors and all those kind of goodies about a given row up top here or on the right over here. So play with it, have some fun with it. The hope, hopefully this is your first Power Apps experience. You're now ready to promote this. The last thing to talk about is just kind of logistically what else we have here. Logistically on the left side, here we go. You'll see your tree view, which shows you all the areas that you can see, all the objects that are in this application. The next step down is what items you want to add to the application. Below that is the database tables that are involved, our SharePoint list. Your logos can go in the media tab. Power automation can be integrated here for workflows. And then lastly, you'll see a list of all your variables if you had any variables there. And there are other items on the left here as well that are outside the scope of the beginner area here. So once we're done, we can publish this application. So if you hit this icon in the top right here to publish, you can save it right here, but nobody can see it until you publish it. So when I hit publish, give it a name of some sort. All right, and I'll hit save. And then now on my phone device, I can now see the application about two or three minutes later. You might have to, if you have Power Apps app installed, you might have to turn on, based on what environment you're on, uh, developer access to where you can see dev apps. To do that, just click on your picture and you'll see at the very bottom, it'll say, do you want to see apps from developer environments also? You might have to wait about two minutes. So what your next step is, is to install the Power Apps app on your tablet or your phone device, and you'll see this application out there ready to start playing. All right, this is part of our mini classes that we do around Power Apps. You can find those at pragmaticworks.com. We also have something called a hackathon where we build an app with you, and we have virtual mentoring where we teach you with your own problems that you might have, help you getting, helping you get unstuck. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. Please do subscribe uh, if you have a moment, if you found this information valuable. We're making all these uh, videos all the time. It's just nice to know that people are watching them. Thanks so much and have a great day. Goodbye.